Hello everybody and welcome to the EIS part of the TALIS video tutorial. After starting the TALIS software, click on the EIS button in the main menu to proceed to the EIS page. Here at first we call the Control Potentiostat page in order to set the parameters related to the Potentiostat and check the external cell connections. This display box shows the open circuit potential OCP with the potentiostat switched off. When the potentiostat is switched on, the DC voltage or the DC current is displayed here. If you have got additional external potentiostats, electronic loads, multiplexer cards or a noise probe installed, you may switch to one of these channels by clicking to the device button. After doing that, all settings and displays on the control potentiostat page are related to this channel. Let's have a look at the check cell connections page now. Here you define whether you are using a 2, 3 or 4 electrode arrangement. In addition, you have to specify the use of a buffer such as the U buffer or the HZ probe and you have to enter the gain switch setting here. Back to the control potential set page, we are selecting the operation mode. In potential static mode, the DC potential is controlled and the current is measured. In galvanostatic mode, the DC current is controlled and the potential is measured. Now set the DC value, potential or current, by entering the value in the input box. If you want the rest potential to be set automatically, simply enter a question mark or a blank line instead of the value with the potential static mode selected. Please note that if you enter zero volt, the potential is always kept at zero volt and not at the OCP, which may differ from zero volt drastically. We didn't switch on the potential stat so far. Let's do it now by clicking here. You can see the potential and current values displayed by the software instruments. Please uh, keep in mind that the current limits set in the setup page are not valid in the control potential stat mode. Here the entire current range of the device is used. The current limits are only used in the measurement modes. We only use DC voltages and currents so far. In order to record EIS we need to superimpose an AC amplitude. You can set the frequency of the AC sine wave here. This frequency is only used in the control potential stat page and does not have any meaning in the EIS measurement later on. The same is true for the number of shots per measurement point. This averaging will smoothen noisy signals. You set the AC amplitude here. After you confirm this value the AC amplitude is automatically switched on. It can be set in 10 steps between 1 millivolt and 1 volt. An input of 0 volt switches the AC amplitude off. The display can be adapted to your needs by selecting your desired output format. This setting is also valid only in the control potential stat page. These four displays are showing current and potential of the AC signals in the time and frequency domain. You can easily see disturbances, noise and harmonics here and with this information you have a first estimation of the quality of your measurement. An ideal quality shows smooth sine waves in the time domain displays and no harmonics in the frequency domain displays. With the DC voltage and the AC amplitude we have set all the relevant parameters and we have checked the quality of the signals at a certain frequency. Let's return now to the EIS main page. Here we have to set all the EIS scan related parameters. Above all this is the frequency range of the scan. You set it using the upper and lower frequency input boxes.
Additionally, you can set the starting frequency. This can be any frequency in between the frequency range you set before. We recommend to keep the sweep mode as it is. In this case, the frequency sweep starts at uh, the starting frequency, goes up to the upper frequency limit, and then back to the lower frequency limit. The range between starting frequency and upper frequency is measured twice, allowing you to check the stability of your probe. You can say it is stable over time if the two points of the upwards and downwards sweep at the same frequency are matching. This is where you set the sweep mode. If you decide to double the lower frequency range instead of the upper, please take into account that low frequency measurements are taking a lot more time than high frequency measurements. This is where you set the number of measure points per decade as well as the number of shots per measurement. You can set these parameters separately for the higher and the lower frequency range. Please remember that the measurement time increases with decreasing frequency. A high number of averaging counts in the low frequency range can prolong your measurement time drastically. Here the estimated duration of your measurement is shown. If all the settings are done, you can start the AIS measurement here. The display is changing to the real-time recording window. The big graph shows the proceeding of the sweep. The four smaller graphs on the top show voltage and current signals in the time domain and in the frequency domain. Same as in the control potentiostat window, you can easily see noise and disturbances there. The DC values of each measurement point are shown on the right hand side. The asterisk informs you of the DC mode, potentiostatic or galvanostatic. After the measurement is finished, the spectrum is displayed. Clicking on the graph allows you to go through the curves by a crosshair cursor. The values of the selected point is shown on the right hand side. The display can be switched between Bode, Nyquist and several other standard graphs. Now you can save the measurement data. Each file also contains a command block you can fill before saving. The time of measurement and the DC parameters are filled by default. In addition or alternatively you may save the data in the ASCII text format in order to import them into any third-party analysis software such as Excel or Origin. If you like you can save the diagram graphics as an EMF file or you can copy it to the Windows clipboard for use in Word or PowerPoint. Of course you can send the graphics to a printer or to the clipboard as well. Now let's go back to the EIS main page. TALIS allows you to acquire additional values like temperature, pH value or others if the optional cards or NetVI devices are installed. On this page you can set up serious measurements over time, potential current or other parameters. Using an RMUX card you can automatically scan through up to 64 cells as well. This button leads you directly to the analysis section of the TALIS software called SIM. Here you can create and fit equivalent circuits. 
When you load previously saved data, you automatically get the full set of parameters back so that you can easily repeat a measurement with the same parameters.